Hi there and welcome to Bustanet. Yes, this is a channel where I try to do anything and everything I can on Football Manager. I run guides, I do playthroughs and occasionally I get lots of questions about the way I play the game. And on today's show, I'm going to cover training or uh, specifically how I set my schedules up. And um, I've re received a lot of requests for these. Uh, I've managed to share them on Twitch. Because it's easier for me to do it on Twitch since I can spend more time explaining them and um, people can actually uh, see how I set things up and it's, uh, it's easier. But on YouTube where you curate most of the shows, you tend, to, you tend to do things a bit faster. So I wanted to do a video specifically for this and I've waited uh, for a while and now I've decided, uh, well, I've popped up the video. Okay, so let's take a look at this player. His name is Ben Kong. Now, training itself, when you schedules, you have to have a goal, all right? So you have to have a philosophy for your club. And with uh, this club, we have a specific philosophy in mind when it comes to the way we want to play our football and the kind of attributes that we need to get the job done. With our youth players, we have a strategy where we go out, we scout them based on certain attributes and personality profiles. And then we incorporate them into the squad, develop specific training schedules for them and guide them, eventually hoping to see them develop into world-class players. And Ben Kok is a very good example of a player who has developed extremely well in the club. Now, this season alone, he's already scored 20 goals and we, we are only in April. The season is coming to an end. He's scored 20 goals. He's been with the club. He's 20 years old. He joined the club and he was about 19 years old and uh, he has come along pretty well and his development has been extraordinary if you look at his age because uh, here again uh, he was uh, he joined the club in the 21 22 season he's been here for a while and uh, his attribute development has been extraordinary since he was 19 years old um, as you can see here he's only 20 right now um, so um, his development has uh, has has not has been quite quite a sh quite stunning because he said almost fifty three points in attribute development. Um, he plays as a striker within a system, and we've got other players in this uh, in the club who have also developed very well. Coaches, uh, in the coach reports they reckon he's as good as Mohamed Salah and Roberto Firmino already. He's now only twenty years old, and uh, he's uh, in this last game he scored a hat trick. Now, he has developed strongly because um, when we set things up at the club, we had a philosophy. My, when you want to set training up, there are two ways you can go. You can have your ass man take over. That's perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but generally, you'll find that um, the development isn't as focused as it would be if you're managing it yourself. So if people ask me the question, can I get the same with an ass man in charge? My answer will be frankly, no, you won't. You won't be able to get this kind of focus development unless you yourself have a hands-on approach in the game. So if you want the same to happen to you with the ass man in charge, I'm sorry, it won't. Uh, you might get good development of your players, but you won't get extraordinary spikes like this because the training has to be different. So what I've done is uh, I have a club philosophy where we play football in a specific way. We have a whole model that we follow. We, um, there are several steps that I take. There are basically eight steps in our footballing philosophy, which closely follows. I mean, one could argue that I'm using IX's tips model or Hiramin STEM model. Um, I, I kind of follow certain schools of thought here because uh, it's the, like the IX tips model identifies players, grooms them, and then uh, assesses them over time. So their, their philosophy is based on um, identifying players with the TIPS model. This is technique, footballing intelligence, a player's personality, and his speed. Um, the uh, here and win model is called speed, technique, uh, footballing intelligence, and mentality. There's not a lot of difference between the two. So what I do is uh, I have a CDA, like core duty attributes for my club. Um, I identify what these attributes are going to be for our club based on my expectations. And then the second step would be to scout players who have a specific DNA that uh, meets uh, 
my duty expectation. So if I want um, certain players to come into the club, I will. So if they're senior players, then maybe the attribute sele- uh, spread is a bit more rigid. But for youngsters, typically I start with natural fitness and I go with determination because I want those kind of players. Then I pull them in and then I assess the kinds of attributes that they have based on my expectation of uh, whether that person, that player can play an attack duty, a defend duty or a support duty in the team. Then I set up training plans for them to develop along a given path. Then the fourth thing that I do is I ensure that the players have the right personality. Now this is going to be important. It's you generally will find that players who have solid personalities will have good spikes in their development. Take Ben Cock, for example. He has a resolute personality, so he's been developing really well. The fifth thing that you want to do is you want to use one tactical system with a long-term plan for development. So ideally, if you're the sort of person that keeps changing your tactics, it's not going to be very good for long-term development because your youth team is going to be using the same tactics. So you want to use a tactic that ensures that you get players coming through the tiers. Right. So even when you go to your youth team and you set a training, individual training focuses for players, you want to get them training in positions that will, which will be useful for you in the long run. You also want to evaluate players' performances and how they do in games as well as in training. So when they're playing well, let's say you've got an 18-year-old who's playing very well inside the under-18s team, uh, you, you might be a good idea to give him one or two games in the senior squad to see you know how he's performing the seventh thing that i normally do is i always look for mentors these are going to be very valuable in the long run you want to have players with fantastic personalities the challenge most people will have in the game is um, the ability to influence the mental development of a player because if you have so, too many poor personalities in your squad they're not they too many bad seeds in the under-18 squad is going to not be good for your youth development as well. So you want to ensure that you take the chance, take them out, get them mentored, and then drop them back into the under-18 squad, which is exactly what I do. Once they get a solid personality, I drop them back. Now let's take a look at my club DNA, my club philosophy. As a club, we want to play football in a certain way. So whenever I look at my players, I have, a, I have the attack duty, I have the support duty, and the defend duty. So I... You you notice that even in training, you've got units here. You've got goalkeeping unit, defensive unit, attacking unit. When you go into training, there will be certain training sessions that are focused on the attacking unit and certain uh, training sessions that are focused on the defensive unit because the uh, the training is going to be weighted differently so that the attribute development is going to swing one way or the other. So I am very focused on making sure that my players develop very well. So what I do is with my defensive unit, um, I'm looking at acceleration, positioning, bravery, determination, natural fitness, tackling, concentration, and anticipation being the main attributes that I want to see as a core part of our DNA. Then with the attacking unit, I have acceleration, passing off the ball, decisions, determination, work rate, composure, and first touch. Then for players in the support unit, I'm looking at acceleration, positioning, decisions, stamina, work rate, determination, passing, tackling, concentration, and bravery. So, here, if you look at the whole thing, you notice that I've break, broken these into three groups. But you only have two training units in the game. I don't really care. Because I know that if in a match, I might have to have a player who is a support, un- support duty coming back to help defend. So I need him to have the right attributes to do the job. If he doesn't have those attributes, he's, I, know, I can't rely on him. If, if he doesn't have uh, concentration, he doesn't have bravery, then he, I don't think he's going to be a very good asset for whenever I need to defend. It's important to remember here that training is fluid. Right? There's, there's no necessity to be rigid about it. We've got a defensive unit, we've got an attacking unit. You could have a situation where you might be an underdog and the CDA that I just listed for my team might be different from yours because you might want the majority of your players to have good anticipation, concentration, and marking. In this particular case, even your wingers could have may have a need for that. And you may opt. In that case, what I would do is I would move some of the wingers from the attacking unit into the defensive unit so they can de- benefit from the defensive schedules that I might have designed. So where you go with your training is entirely up to you. So personally, I wanted Trent Alexander-Arnold to have a very... Uh, I wanted him to improve his attacking side of the game very early in uh, my training schedule. So what I did was I 
moved him into the attacking unit. Now that he's getting a bit older, I moved it back into the defensive unit so that we can develop other players in the long run and put them into the attacking unit. This is something that you can do for yourself. People have asked me for my training schedule, so I'm going to share them with you. Um, I want to be very, very careful here. These schedules are specific to the style of football we like to play, which is on the, gr on the ground. We like to move the ball on the ground. Uh, we like lots of movement. We like lots of true passes. I like to restrict play for the opposition. I like to make it hard for them to find space. This is the style of football I like, and this is the style of football that gets translated in my matches. So my training schedules are for my kind of football. So will they work for your kind of football? I can't promise you that. All I know is if I wanted to develop a team which does more through balls, is deadly at finishing, and phenomenal at passing the ball, then yeah, you might want to try these out. Okay, so let's start with the beginning. So it's very easy. Uh, at the start of a season, sorry, we'll start with this. At the start of the season, I'm more focused on developing tactical familiarity. So this is my defending schedule. I might use them twice a, twice a month uh, to get the team off and running. So we've got the mental side of the game, anticipation, composure, concentration, decisions all about positioning, teamwork, and vision. More importantly, I get mentality with position, role, and duty from this. I get pressing intensity marking from this. Uh, I get uh, pressing intensity marking from this. I get... All these nice little ones working, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, then I've got quickness, which works on acceleration, agility, and pace. Then I work on passing, tackling, anticipation, concentration, marking. This 40-40, so I get the whole team doing it. Restrict play. Everybody do it together. Right? So, then we've got defending, disengaged, and engage. Marking, tackling, anticipation, concentration, positioning, and teamwork. Here we've got marking, tackling, aggression, anticipation, decisions, and positioning. So... We get both of them. I get positioning here and concentration. I get anticipation, decisions, and positioning. So I cover both of these. Then we got defending white, where we got heading, marking, anticipation, decisions, and positioning. So this is my defending schedule, which also incorporates one set piece training, which gives me an upcoming bonus for the next game, which includes defense. How we defend from corners. Now, once the season is underway. And my team has achieved tactical familiarity. I usually switch to this. Now this has got still has one one tact familiarity here and here, so it doesn't really bother me very much because I still like the fact that my team has an overall development along a certain a certain line, uh, physical because uh, we I I do believe in physical um schedules. Now my schedules are very heavy, so I I would recommend that when you go into it, I wanted to fill it up so that you get an idea. Now, typically, what I normally do, would, might do in a game uh, as the season goes on is I might g remove one of these and put rest. So, which are the ones I normally take out for rest? I might take out, depending on the week, my schedule and how tough it is, I might take overall and resistance out and make this into a rest. Or I, might, and I'm, or I could make a Wednesday a lighter load and then move transition restrict into overall and give resistance a break. So, I might, I want to keep these purple ones as far as possible. And uh, since we got six of these, I can afford to lose two of them. Right? But between the ones, the priority, the ones I will lose first in a heavy schedule is going to be overall and resistance, these two. So that I don't, because the players are already going to be quite knackered right, this time. So this is a schedule that I use when we are off and running with the season. Now, this it becomes the interesting part. Okay. Start of the season, this is my attacking schedule. Right. So this works on the attacking side of the game for the whole for the attacking unit. So they get creative freedom, mentality with position, role, and duty. Creative freedom. Uh, they get passing style and tempo, and then they get passing style and creative freedom from all of these plus the mental attributes. Right. So if you notice one thing, there is no crossing in. There's zero crossing in. Right. It's dribbling, finishing, first touch, long shots, passing technique, off the ball, and vision. This is what we. Want. Okay, now you could have a different style of play, right? You could do something entirely different. You could want to go attacking patient in your game, right? So you could want to have finishing first touch, passing technique, composure, decision, play off the ball, which is fine. Um, I sometimes I sometimes go attacking patient for this because uh, we, we want passing on the ground. But here, I got dribbling in this one and I got no dribbling in this one because we have a lot of inside cutting players in my Right, who take on and I play with run at defense with some of my tactics. So that's one of the reasons why I use attacking. 
because that is central to the way we play our football. So this is my schedule for the way I play my football, right? So then we've got, once the season is underway, then I want to improve how we finish. Then things become a bit different. Chance conversion, finishing. This is my, every striker on the pitch, work your ass off and learn how to score goals. So this is the brain schedule, which is fully loaded with chance conversion. And then attacking patient, finishing first touch passing, as you can see. So um, if I find myself in a position where I need to give my players rest days, physical comes out, attacking patient, attacking patient, or team bonding. Because by the time the season is well underway, I probably don't need team bonding. So this one actually becomes uh, physical rest, and then attacking patient, attacking patient, attacking. might be removed to give my players rest. Okay, so we've done uh, the two defensive ones and the two offensive ones. What about, there's one more schedule that I use and I swear by it because this is the one that gives me uh, a heavy focus on the mental side of the game. So here again, uh, we do a lot of ball distribution, dribbling, passing decisions, vision and teamwork. Uh, then we do ball retention, first touch, anticipation, composure, decisions, teamwork. This works on the attacking unit. The attacking unit also is attacking shadow player, anticipation, composure, decision of the ball, teamwork. I don't mind the fact that we have mentality with position and role and duty. Seriously, I, I, I'm actually after these mental attributes. Specifically, because they're very, these are very focused only on the ones I'm after, anticipation, concentration. So, and this is off the ball. This is positioning. So this is extremely valuable to me. Yeah. The ones I take out again uh, when I need rest is transition, press, transition, press, and transition restrict. Because as you remember, I have a defensive schedule that has these as well. So I have somewhere here. And if I need to, I need to give my team a break or give them rest days, I might take one of these, two, one of these out. Uh, transition, press, transition, restrict, or, and maybe even physical. Now physical is in here because sometimes I want quickness. So it all depends on how I do. Uh, so sometimes I need goalkeeper training, so what I do is I come in here and I might put goalkeepers or uh, distribution. So this is, these are small little changes I make, might make to my tank, um, to my training schedules. So when it comes to the youth players, uh, my schedules might be a bit different. So I've got a few schedules for the youth, right? So I've got youth attacking. This is uh, for the attacking side of the game. We've got chance conversion, attacking direct chance creation and chance conversion and physical and outfield. Then we have a uh, youth PRD, which has got a bit of the blue ones. You can see I've written these down so I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I'm looking after going for the mental side of the game as well as the blues. Uh, this is fine physical. I feel the younger, you generally want to push them a bit more. Then youth possession. Uh, here, ball retention, ball distribution, chance creation. They got recovery, team bonding, and match practice. Uh, then we've got youth mentals, which is almost similar to the PRD one. But this is a lighter. Sometimes I, sometimes I find that um, I want my youth players to have a bit more of a lighter schedule, and this is actually a lighter schedule than the other one, uh, which is um, this one, right? So this is a bit more heavier, and then I've got this, which is a bit more lighter, and there's a lower chance of injury, uh, because when you use more of the blue ones, there's a higher chance of injury. Some, and then uh, we've got finally youth defending. So defending is similar to the senior teams, ground defense, defending wide, defending disengage, transition, press, transition, press, physical outfield, and tactical. So these are some of the schedules I use for my team. And uh, they are schedules that um, help my team develop in a certain way. Now, as far as training is concerned, uh, generally what I would recommend is uh, if you go into the game and you want to train your team, be very specific about how you want to train your players. So here, uh, we've got roles. We've already identified roles for my players. They also have, uh, they're also training certain areas. Again, like Kevin Griffiths here, he's not fantastic. Um, but he's developing reasonably well um, in our team. Um, he's only been here, well, he's been here for how long? I don't know how long he's been here. He's only been here for a short while. He's 18 years old, so he's only been with the club for one season. And, uh, so his development is pretty solid uh, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, as you can see, I'm more concerned about them. As a, you know, determination does improve 11. So it goes, has gone up to 12. He's not been mentored at all. And then we got Liam Maloney. Now this boy has been moved into the senior team as well. He's occasionally gets dropped into the senior team and I've dropped him back. He's already developed uh, 
So his determination also is shoot is going up. So it's six, seven, eight. They will they will their determination does have a tendency to drop. Here we got another player, uh Charlie Moran, uh who spent a lot of time with the senior team for development, so he's also coming along quite well. His determination has also gone up. So eleven, he was moved into the senior team for mentoring, so he's gained one point after being moved up. Uh then we've got other players like Josh McIntyre. Josh McIntyre has been at the club for all. We signed him and he was a uh, a youngster uh, in 21-22. He came in at the same time as Bangkok. Um, we got this player. His development has also been... Um, it's been okay, I guess. This is the one player I haven't really been using. Uh, his determination has gone from uh, 14 to 15. Um, and uh, his personality is professional. So he's going to get a chance. No, he's going to reach a point where he's not playing with the youth team a lot more. Uh, we moved him back into the youth team. But I find that some I, I I much rather give them a few games to the senior team. And I find that like Bangkok, Bangkok was given by his 19 years old, which explains why his uh, attributes have really spiked. Uh, once he's 18, he has to play first team football. Because I'm waiting for him to turn 18 before I give him a few more games. He has already scored a few games. He scored uh, three goals. Uh, he did score a goal for us in a competition last season, but not in the league. I think it was in the Champions League that he scored a goal. Uh, Continental, was it a cup? Yeah, cup competitions, he scored one goal for the senior team. Right? So he scored one goal for the senior team on his debut. That was quite an amazing debut for us. Or rather... Sorry, when it, when it, comes, to Josh, when it comes to Josh McIntyre, we gave him a debut right, when he joined the club. We started training him. He scored five goals in his first season for... Uh, he was a uh, he was mentored in the senior team immediately after joining the club. Uh, he scored five goals in seven appearances, and he immediately you know, once his personality was professional. This is another interesting player, Josh McIntyre. Right, so he joined the club uh, two seasons ago. Right, he rather last season. Uh, he joined the club last season. Uh, he started. I mentored him immediately and put him in the first team squad for mentoring. And I gave him a bit of a run in the cups. He scored five goals in seven appearances. And then after that, when he, his, uh, his uh, profile, his personality became professional, I dropped him back into the under-18s because I wanted him to spend more time in the under-18s. So he's banging in all the goals from the under-18s. So he scored 38 goals in 41 appearances. So we, uh, we're, not, we're trying our best not to overplay our youngsters. We've got a lot of youngsters. We've got Josh McIntyre, Charlie Moran. Um, Ben Kong and one other player, I can't remember his name, got four actually, I want to develop. And the development of all four players has been fantastic. The thing is you can achieve these kind of things in the game too. The most important thing that you need to do is you need to identify what you and how you want to play your game. What do you want, what do you want to use? What kind of tactic do you want to use? Now, uh, if your tactic is heavily based on crossing, right? if you are crossing heavy tactic, then you're taking my training schedules and using them and hoping for the best, then... You might need to tweak the training schedules. Right? That's my piece of advice because the training schedules I have are made for my team. So if you if you want to improve the scoring side of your game, for example, then use my scoring schedules. You want to improve the defensive side of your game, right? So you want your teams to be better at defending the ball, then use that defending schedule. But uh, understand what the schedules do. This is the reason why I waited so long to do this video. I wanted you guys to get a good feel of how I play my games and I shared my tactics with you. So you probably said, you've seen these tactics and use them. Now I'm sharing my schedule. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little guide on how to use the schedules and uh, you can check the links below for a hot link to my folder which will contain schedules, filters, tactics. But once again, thanks for all the support. You guys have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.